Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The objective in the placement of the rubber dam is to isolate the tooth. One, to provide a clean, dry, sterilizable field. Two, to protect the patient from swallowing or aspirating foreign objects. Three, to protect the patient from rotary and hand instruments and the trauma of repeated manual manipulation of the oral soft tissues. And four, to provide faster and more efficient operation. The tray setup consists of the following items. The rubber dam itself, a rubber dam frame, a rubber dam clamp which holds the rubber dam on the tooth, a plastic instrument which is used to remove the rubber dam from the wings of the clamp, a rubber dam punch, and the rubber dam clamp forceps. There are different types of frames other than the metal young frame used here. This is a frame similar to the young frame, only made of radiolucent nylon. The advantage of this type of a frame is that it, since it is radiolucent, the image of the frame will not interfere with the radiographic image. Another type of translucent or radiolucent uh, nylon frame is the so-called OSPI frame, which provides the same advantage as the other nylon frame. The disadvantage of this type of frame is that the working field provided is a little smaller than that provided by either one of the open top frames. There are several different ways to put on a rubber dam. The most efficient and easiest method is to place the frame on the rubber dam immediately, providing a smooth, stretched surface. And then, depending upon the tooth that you are going to isolate, a hole is punched in the rubber dam. For almost any maxillary tooth, the hole can be punched somewhere in the horizontal midline of the rubber dam. A maxillary central, lateral, or cuspid could be punched somewhere in the middle of the dam. If I were working on a maxillary molar or any posterior tooth that were on the right side, I'd punch the hole a little above the midline and a little to the right of center. If it were a left maxillary posterior tooth, I would punch the hole a little to the left of center and a little to, toward the superior border of the rubber dam. There are different ways of placing the rubber dam on the tooth. One is to transport this to the patient and slip this hole over the tooth to be isolated. The other method is to take the clamp and place the wings of the clamp on the rubber dam, place the rubber dam clamp forceps on the clamp, and transport this mechanism to the tooth to be isolated. We will now move to the patient and demonstrate the placement of the rubber dam. We will demonstrate the placement of the rubber dam on the maxillary right central of this patient. The rubber dam clamp forceps are placed in the holes of the rubber dam clamp, transported to the maxillary right central. The wings of the clamp are spread apart with the rubber dam clamp forceps, and the clamp is placed touching the surface, the enamel surfaces of the maxillary right central down to the cervical. The rubber dam clamp punch, or the rubber dam clamp forceps are removed. With a plastic instrument, the rubber dam is removed from the wings of the clamp so that the rubber dam completely isolates the tooth at the cervical. At this point, of course, the saliva ejector would be placed in the mouth. An alternative method of placing a rubber dam is to have the rubber dam placed on the rubber dam frame, the hole punched in the proper position. The hole in the rubber dam is placed over the tooth to be isolated with the thumb and forefinger of the left hand. The rubber dam is moved to the cervical 
and the rubber dam clamp, in the rubber dam clamp forceps, is carried to the tooth, to the cervical. Rubber dam clamp forceps are removed. The advantage to this method is that it is not necessary to remove the rubber dam ma material from the wings of the clamp. We will now remove the rubber dam and move to the placement of the rubber dam on a maxillary first molar. The rubber dam is punched in a position slightly superior to the horizontal midline and slightly to the right for the maxillary first molar. The hole in the rubber dam is placed over the tooth to be isolated and held in position with the thumb and forefinger of the left hand so that the hole completely covers the tooth. The wingless clamp then is placed over the tooth to maintain the rubber dam in position on the maxillary molar. The other method of placing a rubber dam is similar to the one demonstrated for a maxillary anterior tooth using a wing clamp. In this instance, the wings of the clamp are placed in the hole punched in the proper position in the rubber dam. The rubber dam clamp forceps are then placed on the clamp and carried to the tooth to be isolated, the maxillary first molar. The advantage of this method is that you may already have the clamp placed by your assistant or previous to beginning on the rubber dam. The disadvantage is that once the clamp is placed on the tooth, the rubber dam must be removed from the wings of the clamp. Otherwise, the tooth will not be isolated. You can see the rubber dam attached to the wings of the clamp, and this must be removed from the wings before the tooth is properly isolated. The rubber dam is now in position. The placement of the rubber dam for the isolation of a mandibular anterior tooth is similar to that of the maxillary tooth. The hole in the rubber dam is punched in the midline inferior to the horizontal midline of the rubber dam. It may be placed in either one of two methods. The hole in the rubber dam may be placed over the tooth in question, isolating the tooth, and the rubber dam clamp forceps can be carried to the tooth. in this fashion. An alternative method is to place the wings of the clamp in the hole of the rubber dam and then carry the rubber dam and the clamp to the tooth. For posterior teeth, either one of two methods may be used, or three methods. One, the hole in the rubber dam is carried to the tooth and the tooth is isolated by placing the hole over the tooth in question. And in this instance, the appropriate wingless bicuspid clamp would be placed in position to maintain the rubber dam in that position. The other method, of course, is to have the wing bicuspid clamp placed in the hole and then carried to the tooth, after which, of course, the rubber dam must be removed from the wings of the clamp. Still another simple method is to isolate the tooth by placing the rubber dam clamp on the tooth in question initially. The clamp is securely placed on the tooth. The hole in the rubber dam stretched taut on the frame is then carried to the clamped tooth. The hole is stretched over the posterior wing of the clamp on the tooth and carried forward anteriorly over the tooth to be isolated. It is necessary in this instance then to go back and make sure that the posterior portion of the rubber dam goes down to the distal surface of the tooth in question and that the anterior border of the rubber dam is anterior to the anterior border of the clamp. It is necessary in this instance many times 
to take a piece of dental floss and go through beyond the wing of the clamp to go down on the distal, between the distal contact of the tooth and anteriorly on the mesial contact of the tooth to ensure that the rubber dam is cervical to the contact points of the tooth to be isolated. These clamps do not represent all of the clamps available. Uh, this display represents a practical assortment that may be used in the placement of a rubber dam, at least for endodontic purposes. These two are anterior clamps. This is the number nine ivory winged clamp, which may be used either as a winged or as a wingless clamp, as demonstrated in the placement of the rubber dam. This long side, you should remember, is always on the labial side in the patient. This aught or double aught clamp is used primarily on mandibular anterior teeth, especially in small mandibular teeth uh, which have a small uh, labial lingual diameter. This represents a wingless bicuspid clamp, a number 27, and this is a winged number 207 bicuspid clamp. This is the wingless number 26 molar clamp, and this is the number 14 winged molar clamp. I hope that this illustration has convinced you of the practicality and the simplicity for the placement of the rubber dam for endodontic purposes. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.